Peace. How's everything going uh, with all the saints out there? Uh, today, we actually wanted to talk a little bit about what's called the pre-trib rapture. Um, it's one of those theories out there that the Most High is going to send his son back, right? Y'all are sure Jesus will end up coming back to rapture out the church, right? They call it the church, and we'll end up being raptured out before the tribulation. So it'll be a great tribulation, usually I think about seven years, but whatever the case, it'll be a great tribulation that goes on throughout the earth, and then we will be taken out before that tribulation comes. All believers, all Christians, all people who uh, claim to believe in the Messiah. Uh, so what we want to do is try to examine that against Scripture, because um, we don't believe that it pans out at all. All right. So the first, we want to look at some of the problems that would happen with that. Um, we know that there would have to be two people of God for that to happen. Because if we read through Revelations, there's a people of God that is still during the tribulation. So it describes people in that tribulation at the very end, the Most High sends his son back. All right. So if we look at it that way, that means there's somebody in the tribulation that are people of God. They keep the commandments and they love God and they believe in the Messiah. And then there's also believers that were taken out of the tribulation. The way that they had explained this is they'll say, well, one is the church and the other is Israel's, right? The Israelites that end up believing after the tribulation, right? So two people of God, that's one double that we have. Then we also have two second comings, right? So Jesus is going to come back before the tribulation, all right? And then also Jesus will come back again after the tribulation for the day of judgment, right? So you have two people of God, two second comings. Then you also have Two uh, first resurrections, right? We have a resurrection that's described in Thessalonians, which they say is the pre-tribulation rapture. Then you also have a revelation described in, um, Re I'm sorry, a resurrection described in Revelations, okay? And so that's called the first, matter of fact, let's get it, um, Revelations chapter 20, verse 4. <clears throat> revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Let's see what it's called here. So this is after all the tribulation is done. This is after, you know, um, the, the beast deceives everybody, and now Jesus comes to lay down law. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God. And right, so these are the people worship the beast. So these are the people that were killed in the tribulation. They are beheaded, right? Let's keep going. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or... In their hands, and right, they, they lived made, and reigned with Christ a thousand years. All right, so they made it all the way through the tribulation without getting the mark or getting anything. Okay, let's keep going. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. All right, so it says the rest of the dead didn't live again until the thousand years were finished, right? This is the first resurrection. So if this first resurrection happens after the tribulation, then that means we had another first res resurrection that happened before the tribulation, right? So that's three problems. Remember, two peoples of God, two second comings, two first resurrections. The last thing is two weddings. Um, in Revelations 19, we have a wedding described, or invitation to a wedding, and then Jerusalem comes down. And then also in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 62, um, it, it describes for us another wedding. And so that would have to be two different weddings because one, of course, is going to be for Israel, the other one would have to be for the church. All right? So two weddings. Two first resurrections, two second comings, and also two people of God. An obvious problem here. Now let's go ahead and look at where they get it from. Okay? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Verse 16, Himself shall be shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we we ever be with the Lord. All right. So this is described to be the first resurrection. This is described to be the resurrection that's before the tribulation happens. All right. Now let's go to Matthew. We're going to hold that, and then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to start at verse 29. Immediately 
after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, so we see immediately after the tribulation of those days, these things happen. Let's keep going. And then shall and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of a fig tree. Well actually you can stop there. So we see that Jesus describes pretty much the exact same event that Paul described, right? Almost the exact same thing. They both describe the shout. They both describe the archangel. They both describe the trumpet, right? So we all look at there, and they all describe that we're all going to be gathered to them. So we look at it, and we say this has to be the same event. But just to be sure, let's go to the next. Uh, let's. I mean, let's go back to First Thessalonians chapter four. And let's keep reading, right? So remember, we have epistle letters. These, these uh, New Testament writings, they're actually letters. So we split them up into chapters and verses just to make them understand. But really, they wouldn't be any chapters. It would just be one long writing, okay? So we're going to look at the letter. We're going to go on to the next chapter. I think we left off at verse, what, 18? Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. All right, so now we're in chapter 5. He says, the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Well, let's take a look at the day of the Lord, right? Let's go ahead and go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, we're going to start at verse 10. shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Alright, so that sounds exactly like what Jesus described, right? So we see if we line everything up, the same place where they say describes the pre-tribulation rapture is actually talking about the day of the Lord. Jesus is actually talking about the day of the Lord. The whole Bible is talking about the day of the Lord. And there's no way that the day of the Lord comes before the tribulation. It comes after the tribulation. So just be assured, we will be caught up and we will meet the Lord in the sky. But it will not be before the tribulation, right? Through much tribulation, we make it into the kingdom. All right? Stay encouraged, saints, and endure to the end. Peace.